Hey guys, uh, so in today's session, I want to look at how to create a simple TCP server using Elixir. So I've, I've been experimenting with distributed stuff and um, Elixir has like really good support for networking stuff. And uh, I just wanted to see how uh, easy it is to set up a simple TCP server, right? <clears throat> uh, and we could just do an echo server. So essentially, an echo server is something which receives a message and just sends it, sends back the same message, okay? So to do this, I've just created a new app uh, with mixed new supervisor um, distributed Elixir, a module name and an app just to make it easier uh, to work with it. And um, now what I'm gonna do is, uh, okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's see the into that open a tmax session and uh, so this is what we want to do we want to create a s simple tcp server so let's just go to the de module i just want to put my code here right actually um so maybe well, we should put it in a separate file so a de i'll call it server right uh and this is a module called server and this guy's um okay so this guy when we spin it up it's going to listen on a port and uh, respond with um, some messages right so this um and we should call it echo server because that's what it is right so um we don't have to rename the file but let's just rename it now uh, the thing you often reach for when you're building um uh, you know processes in elixir or Erlang is a gen server, right? So that is what I would reach out for, but I think there's a better way to do it. Um, in any case, you know, let, let's actually start with a gen server, right? So we'll say it's a gen server, right? Um, and uh, a gen server needs a start link. Well, it doesn't really need a start link, but uh, we'll make things easier because the def default child spec uses this. So, and here we'll say gen server start link um and uh, we'll just start with the same module and uh, the arguments will pass to it or whatever we get and uh, that's it uh and uh and and then that's gonna call the init function and uh pass it the options right and uh, we'll also say this is gonna be an implementation so we'll say implementation is true uh, just to get you know more uh, feedback when we're making mistakes and uh, so through these options what I see is we're gonna pass a port so I'll say port is keyword dot get from the options something called a port and we'll default to 90 50 okay or actually 50 50 40 50 okay so we're just gonna default to that and in the in it we can uh, call we can we can actually spin up the process here but i want to do it in a separate um, like once the, once once the gen server is up so i'll say um okay in the state is um so we want to set up a state here right so i'll say uh def uh, module state and uh, this state is going to have um state is going to have a port so i'll say a port and it's also going to have a reference to the socket right so uh let's uh, see this guy is going to have a state called uh, port is port and socket is now so just leave that uh once we've edited it um we also wanted to pick up um and set up the socket right so uh, here, what we want to do is we want to say uh, send ourselves a message, and so I'll say self, and that message is going to be in it, right? And uh, there's actually a better way to handle this. Um, the the latest airline has something called handle continue. Um, so let's let's set this up, and then we'll see how we can make it better, right? So here, so we got a handle info. And um, when we get the init message with the state, 
we want to initialize uh, the server, right? So till here, this is all, <coughs> you know, boilerplate stuff. Uh, we aren't really doing anything interesting. We haven't really done anything um, related to TCP, right? So here at this point, we want to say, I want to spin up a server. So Erlang has this module called Gen TCP, uh, which allows you to listen to a port. So you can say listen and uh, the port. So our state has a port, I'll say state.port. And uh, we also need to pass it some options, right? Uh, I'll just pass it a few important options. One is um, we want it to be a binary. And uh, the second one is um, um, we don't want it to be active, okay? So um, what active does is active, if you set a, a, a TCP uh, listener to active, then what it's going to do, what's, uh, what, what Gen TCP is going to do is it's going to send us one message for each packet received to this particular process, to the owner. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We just want to read things when we get them. So um, this is going to give us um, an OK and a socket. And so I'll just do that. Uh, once we have the socket, we can just say um, uh, handle info. This is a handle info. So we'll just uh, do a no reply. And we'll update the state to also include the socket. Right? So now our state has the socket. So, all good. Let's uh, let's uh, run it and see, you know, what what that does, right? So, we say ix minus s max, and we do de dot echo server. Oh, that's two echoes. Why is it two echoes? Okay. Um, anyway, so we'll just say uh, start server dot start link. And uh, we don't really have to pass anything. And this is gonna give us a PID. So I'll say PID. And uh, okay, we need to pass it an empty options. So that's the PID. That's the PID. Now, if you try to connect to that port and send some messages, let's see what happens, right? Say echo, hello, and we're gonna use netcat. So netcat takes whatever you pass it to standard in. Uh, localhost 5050 or it's 4050 right and uh, <clears throat> it's gonna send it to that um, that uh, server right now we don't see any feedback right so um, at times like these I you know I, I spin up Wireshark if I have to uh, but I, I you know we actually know what's going on here right we have a listener and um, we're uh, you know we're not accepting any connections right but still you know if if you get stuck some you know in a place like this you can spin up wireshark and um, so let me just get wireshark over here and uh, listen on the loopback and um, and actually we can say i want to be destination um hmm so uh, TCP dot uh, port equal to 4050 right because that's the one we're looking for right so um, so that you know we don't get a lot of noise so when we did that right when we sent hello let's see what happened <coughs> so it sent a send packet um, so our, our NC right netcat sent a send packet from the port 52156 because that's what it um, you know, started the TCP connection on, connected to the server's 4050 port, which is our server. And um, and uh, so we'll say, yeah. And then the server sent back uh, SYN uh, ACK, right? So it says, um, everything's good. I'm going to send you the SYN ACK. So the first three packets are always a handshake, right? So in TCP, you have and the first three packets. The way it works is... Um, um, you have the the client and the server right so the client sends uh, a send packet to the server and the server then um, returns a sin plus ack okay and then the client says 
um, okay, everything looks good. So it does an uh, uh, it sends an ag packet to the server. So it takes three packets, uh, three back and forths, to three trips to set up a connection, right? So that's what's happening here. So it's it's done that, and then that's when the client starts pushing data, uh, and that data is hello, right? So it sent uh, a hello message, and the server actually. Even though we didn't do anything, we the, the, our, our server has returned an ACK for this data. So, um, so far so good, right? So it means this, the data is actually going to the server. The server is even accepting this data, right? So it's all good. Um, at this point, let's kill this guy. And uh, we'll see that now the client, the, and the, the way you can, you know, say, where the message is going from is look at the the source and the destination right so the destination 4050 is always the server so this is going from netcat to the server and netcat is saying you know fin bye bye um and the server says okay you know yeah just close the connection right so that's that's the closing handshake so uh all good now what we want to do here is um we actually want to respond with some data right so to do that you need to uh, you know whenever someone is trying to you know connect you need to accept the connection and then you can start sending messages right so um, let's do that um, so to accept something um, we'll have to say chen tcp chen tcp dot accept right so that's the function that accepts um uh, on on the socket and gives you uh, gives you a tcp connection right uh now where do we write this right so, it's, so that's um that's that's the thing with the gen server right like now where do we put this um gen tcp doesn't send as a message when there's a new acceptor right um so Maybe it does, uh, that I, but I don't know, you know, of what it me message it sends. I mean, we probably have to set it up differently. Uh, but the way I do this is I say, you know, so once you're initialized this, right, we're going to return a no reply state socket, right? Um, so what we can do at this point is um, we can do some you know, scheduling of work, right? Continuously listening for a message. Um, or, you know, actually at this point we could say, you know, we're not gonna, like this is a message, we got the message. We're not gonna do anything here. We're just gonna go into a loop, right? So we'll call it an acceptor loop, right? And we'll give it the socket, okay? Uh, again, it's not the best code, but you know, uh, just bear with me for now. So um, this guy's gonna get a socket, and um, the what this guy's gonna do is this guy's gonna um, start accepting the connections, right? So it'll say gen um, TCP accept on the socket, right? So now this guy is gonna give us uh, and uh, a connection, right? So this this is an actual TCP connection and we can do whatever we want now. So, um, for now, what we can do is we can say, you know, hey, as, you know, whenever you connect to my server, um, I'm just gonna print a hello message and, um, and close your connection, right? So we can say, um, we'll uh, as soon, you know, whenever we get this, we're going to say uh, gen tcp dot send we're going to send you a message. Um, the message is gonna be, hello, oh, hello world uh, TCP, right? So that's the message. And as soon as we send the message, we're also gonna close your connection, right? So we're gonna close your connection. And then we're gonna call ourselves back, right? We're just gonna loop our, ourselves, right? So that's good. Um, now let's uh, start this guy again. Um, we need to recompile. So I'll say recompile, recompile, and uh, we'll call the server again. So it's just one echo. 
right uh, and it failed it says no match okay so now uh, the problem with um, our server is we already have a server running um, so we can kill it so or we can start on another port so for now I'll just say 4051 okay so that's the new pid and uh, now if we try to connect uh, using netcat right we don't even have to send a message um, it says hello world and it closes and if you look at uh, Wireshark uh, what's going on here uh, we got a reset um, the server sent a reset but let's see what's going on here okay so let's uh, let's not save let's just start this continue without saving and we're gonna run this again yeah so what happened here TCP port is 4050 there's nothing no traffic how is that possible uh, TCP port is this or destination TCP port destination port is 4050 right so we want to see if um, oh no we have 4051 4051 is our port now so uh, what's going on uh, we have uh, this this okay the netcat connected to the server the first three are the handshake right and then um, the server actually sent a message now what was that message hello world tcp right and then the the client acknowledged said okay looks good and then the server sent a fin right because we're closing from the server now and the client said looks good i got your message uh but then the client actually when we hit the enter key um the client actually sent a, a, an oa which is <coughs> which is a hex, hex for the um line feed or carriage return what is it like I, I don't know like it's one of those right and then the server just says uh, it sent a reset packet which i'm actually not sure what that is but probably means you know we close the connection and um you can't send us any more data right so um, all good and um, that's our simple server but now we all we're, we're actually saying no we don't want this we want an echo server right so when when the client sends us something we want to just print that back right so uh, so actually let me rename this and say um, greet server and so this is a good server greet server and we'll say rename to create server.x okay so that's good now we want to create uh, an echo server so we'll say lib de echo server and uh, here echo server right uh, and actually this shouldn't even be in a chain server really so uh, let's get rid of that um, we've got the state um, I want a start link um, and what we want to do here is want to we want to get the port so you know um, let's let's make a few refactorings right so you get the port and uh, what we want to do here is um, we want to actually spawn a new process which is not a gen server right this is like a custom process because the way we were doing uh, the acceptor loop which is kind of a tail recursive call is kind of hacky right that's not how gen servers work right gen servers receive messages and respond um, to like gen server calls and casts and like internal messages um, that's that's not what we want right we want with the with a tcp server we want to run like a continuous loop and whenever someone's trying to connect we you know create the connection get the connection and start communicating with them right so um that's why you know let's remove that and we do want to use linking so we'll say spawn link and we'll call ourselves we'll say module um and the function we'll call is init and we'll call it with 
options. Actually, let's, let's push this down. Um, so we got that, right? So we're, again, you know, we're just doing things a bit differently. We're not using a gen server at this point. So there's no point of an implementation, right? So we got that. And at the end of init, uh, we can just call a function called connect, uh, which takes uh, a port, right? And uh, so this this function is gonna be connect. Actually, it doesn't really have to be a separate function, right? So I'll uh, we'll just say in it. Um, that's the port, and then we're calling the acceptor loop with the socket. So this is this is awesome, right? Um, and let's just test this out real quick. Um, so what's going on here? So it says port. Uh, is unused. We are using port, right? Oh, so there's no state. Uh, so we'll just say port. It's all good. Now let's just uh, restart this guy and say uh, echo server in all good. Uh, exception keyword get port. Uh, start link. Oh, okay. So. Um, one one um, one thing about spawn link is it takes a bunch of arguments as a list, and um, so our opts needs to be inside a list, even though it's a keyword list. So um, it's a restart, and uh, now it says no match of right hand side value is pinned. So spawn link. Um, returns just a pid. So spawn link takes something and returns a pid. So if you want to return an okay tuple, we can do that. But for now, we'll just say pid is v. Um, oh, okay. Um, so let's recompile this guy. Uh, recompile. And let's use uh, another port. So now we have a, a process it's running. Um, now, uh, again, you know, we, we want to do the NC thing, um, but this is 4052. Uh, it's closing the connection. It's the same as the previous um, greet server, right? We didn't change anything. We just want to see that it's working. So it's working. That's great. Um, now, what we want to do here is um, we actually do want to do an echo, right? Uh, and we don't want to close the connection, right? So we'll say, um, we'll send it to an echo loop, right? So I'll say echo loop connection. And uh, echo loop takes a connection, which is also a socket, by the way. And uh, what it does is, uh, GenTCP has a method, um, <laughs> not a method, and we're not in object-oriented land. So it has a function called receive, uh, which takes a socket and a length, right? Now our socket is the connection, uh, we'll say zero, which means, you know, give me all you got, right? Uh, and um, this guy says, um, it gives us uh, the data, right? Um, so it gives us the packet, and if there's an error, it gives us an error, right? So maybe the client closed, or maybe there's a close, or whatever, right? So if there's an error, we'll just, um, uh, log it, we'll just say log error, error is error, right? And uh, if there is uh, some data, what we're gonna do is we'll just say log or debug um, received this packet, right? And we'll also send that packet back to the back to the connection, right? So we'll just send it back, awesome. And uh, once all that is done, if there's no error, we wanna loop back, right? So we'll say, echo loop again with the connection, right? Uh, why is this guy complaining? Yeah, we need to require logger, right? Yeah, we're not even using this state, so I'm just gonna get rid of that and that, and uh, we'll restart the server, and uh, now, 4052, we got a PID, it's an echo server, and uh, I'm gonna say echo, hello, hello, hello. And we'll echo it to localhost 4052. Um, nothing. What's going on here? Uh, so it's not printing any debug 
messages uh, or anything of that sort. What's going on here? Oh, we sent it to 40552. <laughs> okay. All right. So see, uh, now we got a hello message back. We got the debug log, right? So we actually sent hello. And the server said, okay, that, if that's what you sent. I'm going to send it back to you. The server sent back hello. And it did close the connection, right? Now, um, let's close this. And uh, I'm going to call it without piping any input, right? So I'll just uh, use NC and we'll say, uh, hello. And then the server responded with a message, hello. This is cool. The server responded with the same message, right? So that's an echo server, right? So it's awesome, it's working. Um, but there's one problem. Can you guys pause this video and look at the code and see what the problem is? All right. Now, let's see, you know, we got one client, he's happy, right? He's getting his echo responses. Now, if another guy connects uh, and says, hello, nothing, what's going on, right? This guy isn't getting any messages back, uh, whereas this guy's getting messages back. So there's something wrong here, right? So what's, what's wrong here? Um, what's wrong is, I mean, it, it's not really wrong, What's happening here is our server process is uh, like we have one server process. And uh, what this guy is doing is it went into the acceptor loop and accepted a connection and then it went into the echo loop, right? Now, as long as it's in the echo loop, as long as this, this guy is connected, it's not going to be able to serve other people, right? So what do we do? We're using Elixir and Erlang. We just spawn this in a separate process and that should do it, right? So let's see. Um, so this should be fixed if you just say spawn this thing in a separate process, right? Because um, then um, that's going to happen in a separate process, that loop. And our accept loop is going to continue accepting new connections, right? So let's kill that. Um, restart the server. And uh, uh, we'll try to do that same thing again. Uh, we need to start the server. Um, so that's uh, the address is already in use. So this this is um, yes yeah, this, this is a problem with um, one of the options. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a sec. Um, but you, you need to use a different port if you're doing it quickly. Um, so we do that and we say hello. It works. Uh, and at this point, the bottom one also works, right? So um, this is cool, right? We're able to serve multiple processes, right? And um, um, I actually have um, uh, a, a script called forever, which is prints some uh, nonsense. Well, I probably don't have. Yeah, let's let's send a sequ sequence of one to thousand to this, right? So and see localhost 4053, right? So it all works, right? So um, it's taking all that data and it's printing it back to the screen, right? So it's all good. Uh, and when we close the connection, it closes it. And that's the end of this uh, echo loop. Um, and then we close this, that's the end of that echo loop and that's the end of that echo loop, right? So we, we have like a proper TCP server which is able to handle multiple connections at this point, right? Uh, now the, the problem with um, uh, ports is, um, you know, the TCP ports aren't uh, released as soon as, um, you know, your, your app stops. So one way to, you know, sidestep that is you could say reuse, uh, reuse address um, is uh, true. And if you do that, it allows you to reuse that port very quickly. Anyway, um, that's that's like a very simple C TCP server. And again, you know, this isn't something you would use in production. This is just to get you started, right? Um, in production, you could, you, you could use something like Ranch, um, which does all of this in a more robust way. Um, but hopefully you learn something. And, uh, you know, this probably, I'm hoping this makes TCP and networking more um, 
more accessible to you folks. So till the next video, bye bye.